Welcome to another RBHSP with Mr. Dalton video. Today we're going to look at methods of training. The first thing you need to think about before designing any training program is the demands the event that you're training for will place on the body, and in particular, which components of fitness will be stressed. Based on this, you need to select the methods of training which will target these identified components of fitness so that you can achieve your desired results. Having identified the components of fitness for our event, we will look today at four methods of training that are particularly important and what adaptations these will have when applied to the principles of training. Continuous training. This type of exercise is, as the name suggests, continuous. Rests are not allowed. To achieve this, you must exercise at a constant rate which is within your aerobic training zone. A guide for this is between 60 and 80% of your max heart rate. Continuous training should last for bouts of at least 20 minutes. Interval training. Interval training involves alternating periods of hard exercise with rest or low intensity periods in between. For example, and as we can see here with Usain Bolt, you may run 200 meters at approximately 85% and then walk for 200 to recover and this would make one rep. You may perform this 5 to 10 times for example which would complete one set. Fartlek training. Fartlek training involves continuous exercise but varying the intensity of the exercise. For example a running session could include running hard for 20 seconds and then jogging for one minute and repeating this. Alternatively, it can be done on distance, as we see here, sprinting for 50 yards, and then jogging for 50 yards. Resistance training. Most people take part in resistance training in order to increase their strength and or their endurance. Resistance training can be in the form of body weight, or an external source, as we see here, with weights. Now we're going to spend some time looking at chronic adaptations. Chronic adaptations are changes that occur in the body as a result of training. They can occur in the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, and the muscular system. As a result of applying these methods of training that we've just looked at, appropriately with principles of training, we should see the following chronic adaptations over time. Firstly, the cardiac muscles surrounding the heart hypertrophies, which means it grows. This results in thicker, stronger walls surrounding the heart. As a result, stroke volume increases and ergo cardiac output increases, meaning more blood can be pumped around the body per minute and this means oxygen can be delivered to the working muscles faster. The next adaptation is the number of red blood cells increases. This improves the body's ability to transport oxygen to the muscles. There is an increased capillarization in the muscles and surrounding the heart and lungs, which increases as more branches develop. This allows more efficient gaseous exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide at these sites. Your resting heart rate will decrease due to more efficient secretory system. This means it will be lower for a given intensity than it was previously, which increases our drift. The accumulation of lactic acid is much lower during high level activity, due to the secretory system providing more oxygen and removing waste products faster. There is improved blood flow which results in more essential nutrients being delivered to the cells of your body. It also results in more effective removal of toxins and other waste materials from your body. The respiratory muscles, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles will increase in strength. This results in a larger tidal volume which allows more oxygen to be diffused into the blood flow. Aerobic exercise improves the efficiency with which the respiratory system can supply oxygen to your body. Your body needs a constant and generous amount of oxygen 
in order to function properly. There will be an increase in mitochondrial density, which are the cell's powerhouse, and this means there is an increase in the rate of ATP production. The muscles, bones and ligaments will become stronger to cope with the additional stresses and impact put through them. The amount of myoglobin within skeletal muscle increases, which allows more oxygen to be stored within the muscle and transported to the mitochondria. Finally, muscles are capable of storing a larger amount of glycogen, which is breaking down carbohydrates we get from our food, and this is used for energy. This has been another RBHSP with Mr. Dalton video. Thanks for watching.